Yo, Rage Match 127, welcome back to another episode of A Tale of the Noble Knights. Uh, we are going, uh, like I said in the last video, uh, we just finished up the Cybernetic Horizon edition of the Noble Knights support. So today, we're going to be going through the Soul Fusion uh, support for the Noble Knights. And so we're going to start that one off with Noble Knight Ivan, Ivan, whatever you want to call him. I've always kind of called him Ivan because it's just the Ivan something. You know, like Ivy and then you're like Ivan. Uh, so that's kind of what. So how this guy ends up happening is he is uh, first off his even though it's Ivan uh, he's more commonly uh, known as Yuwayne, not to be confused with Gawain, but Y Wayne basically. Uh, he is the son of Morgan Le Fay, which we'll get to in just a little bit. Uh, he's kind of one of the more uh, earlier and like well known because he's kind of a very like chivalrous kind of guy. Uh, he's uh, he was one of like the very few that was kind of like introduced into. Arthurian legend, and he's kind of one that helps gain the most traction, because like he's known for like slaying a dragon. He rescues the lion, which is why the lion's in that picture, because this is like one that literally followed him to the day that Ivan died. So that's kind of why he's uh, in it. It's kind of it actually would have been kind of neat if uh, we could have gotten like a lion token, you know, for for that. But you know, it's okay. So that's uh, Ivan. Now we're gonna quickly we're gonna leave him right there because his mom is coming into it. And that is uh, Morgan, the Enchantress of Avalon. And that, like, prismatic secret that got released in the Megatons. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> okay, so Morgan Le Fay. Uh, one of, like, the biggest, like, parts that is actually in Arthurian Legend, which uh, is, I'm very surprised, is kind of weird that it actually took her, like, this long to get introduced into uh, the TCG. So Morgan Le Fay, she's known as the half-sister uh, half to Arthur. And then for the most part, you know, she's known as like a sorceress, you know, enchantress of Avalon. You know, she kind of gets trained from Merlin and stuff like that. That's how she gets to learn all these magical skills and stuff like that. But for the most part, even though most people kind of associate Morgan and Morgan Le Fay as kind of a uh, evil character because she tries to like absurd like uh, Arthur Stone stuff like that. She ends up helping Arthur on numerous occasions. She's helped uh, heal him from uh, grievous wounds. And as well as when Arthur eventually does die, she helps transport him to Avalon and stuff like that. So that's kind of why uh, both his, uh, the swords are lying right there, which is both Calvin and then uh, Excalibur right there. Because in that she would like appear kind of like to Arthur, because I think that right there at like the end of there right here is the cliff where like the Avalon picture is. And then that's when she would come in and, and she's like, oh, I'm going to take Arthur to Avalon because, you know, that's where like the Lady of the Lake and then... Uh, Gwen are standing over him, so then that's where she takes him to heal him. And so then that's really probably just about the most part I can really say for about Morgan. Uh, she kind of goes in various ins and outs throughout the timeline, so there's no really, like, concrete place I could put Morgan. Because she, like, she interacts with the knights, she does, you know, stuff for that, she's stuff with Merlin. You know, there's some stuff where, like, she would help, like, set Morgan up for failure to get him uh, trapped with the Lady of the Lake. It's, it's a whole variety of things, and then of course there's numerous interpretations and portrayals of like what she's like, good, evil, bad, whatever. So there's no really like good place I can put Morgan, other than she just kind of like pops like in and out of the timeline at various points. So that right there is is those two. The next card that got to introduce is Heritage of the Chalice. And Heritage of the Chalice right here is, for the most part, a uh and just a sign that the grail quest has ended even th now this is where i bet like some people are going to get kind of confusing and stuff like that so you know in the background of course is you know gwen and then right here is supposed to be custon but you know it's fine because it's custon was one of the new supports and then that is supposed to be the chalice that like boars has and stuff like that even though boars didn't do it again in my last video it's actually percival and then uh eventually it's galahad or gualshabad that uh end up or uh, yeah right yeah, yeah, Percival and Galahad, Gwalshad. Uh, they're the ones who actually end up completing the Grail quest. Or, uh, not Galahad. Um, yeah, no, it's Galahad, not Gwalshad. Uh, Galahad, the, the, it's the normal one that you can uh, special summon. <laughs> um, they're the ones who actually end up completing the Grail quest. So this is just kind of supposed to be a, for the most part, a uh, like passing of the torch, if you will. This is kind of just like a kind of like establishment shot that Arthur is passing the, like, the title for, like, you know, like, the king, which is, like, supposed to be symbolized by, like, the Holy Grail, to Custon, his successor, for the most part. So then that's kind of what Heritage is about, is that the Grail quest is ended, you know, Arthur's passing the torch on to Custon, who eventually becomes his successor. 
Anyway, in, according to the legend. And then the last card which we have right now, and of course in lovely prismatic secret rare, is until noble arms are needed once again. I kind of wish I had a common because it's going to be really hard to see the, the background stuff like that. But uh, if you guys wanted to uh, look for yourselves, it's for the most part, and again this is going to be really hard because it, prismatic is so nice. Is, so then right there is just supposed to be where it's just uh, his XC's uh, form. I'm getting it. That's just his normal XC's form. That's right there. Uh, and then these two is just, it's uh, right here, it's just glory and then uh, the round table of the knights. And th th all this is just mainly supposed to just like objectify is what he's going to accomplish in his rule because you can see right now he's pulling the sword out of the stone. That's where, like, because this is still in, you know, like, vanilla Artorgus Arthur stage. He has yet to pull the sword out of the stone. He's yet to become king. He doesn't have a crown on his head or something like that. This is still the test that Merlin's set up for him. So this right here, the very last card so far until uh, Flame Noble Knight Roland comes out, <laughs> if it comes out, uh, that, that's going to be the end of it. And then this basically takes place in about the middle of part one. Yeah, I had to say, is where, like, this card would end up, like, belonging. Again, you know, I'm trying to put in some as much uh, shots of this stuff as I can, just to try to, like, show. I really should have brought the comment, but, like, listen, that prismatic secret is just, it's so nice. It's so sparkly. It's so good. But that right there is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. That is, once again, another conclusion right now for uh, A Tale of the Noble Knights. Hopefully then once uh, Flame Noble Knight Rolling comes out, we can continue this series once again. But until then, that's going to be it for today, ladies and gentlemen. That is uh, a, another temporary conclusion to A Tale of the Noble Knights. Be sure you guys stay tuned in for uh, the next support that eventually comes out, because Konami's going to do it. It's one of like the, like, the most like supported ones. And granted, yes, I know Flame Noble Knight may not be uh, the best support that's going to be coming out for it, but it's more stuff for the legend, and I always liked researching the legend, so hopefully you guys will stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you guys, and I'll see you in the next episode of A Tale of the Noble Knights. Goodbye.